Welcome, everyone, to the Hannibal's Hunger YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, we definitely had some clownery uh, with that. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me, and it's all good with uh, the sound. Been messing with the sound all day. Um, this is the, probably the first live stream I've done on this channel in months. Like, I actually don't remember the last time I did a live. So uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Nakia, appreciate you guys. So I know um, over the last few months, there's been a lot of new support with this channel. So before we get into, there's a lot to get into tonight. We obviously gonna talk about the super mayor, um, Keith Freeman, and a lot of stuff that we now know about him. It it's he's basically the fox guarding the hen house. Like that's that's what Keith Freeman is. You gave a fox to guard all these hens. And then, you know, are we surprised when we see what's happening currently with this administration? So we're gonna be talking about that as well. And there was a special meeting yesterday that they premiered today. Let me see if I can pop that up on the screen. Yeah, so they had a special board meeting. It was only an hour, so I was able to watch it and I have some thoughts, some of the highlights, and it was actually one good clip I'm gonna play um, a little later on, um, but, it's a story that just keeps going. You think, okay, every day that something's happening that is just mind blowing and it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But again, um, appreciate you guys who are already coming in. Hit the like, obviously. Um, the stuff that we'll be talking about tonight, it's possible the video can get taken down. Um, we'll be talking about another creator, I think Shaw Wayne Burns. She had a video breaking everything down with Keith Freeman and his criminal and financial history. And that video was taken down for review. Um, also, we'll be talking, uh, not talking, but uh, using clips from the individual investor. He had a really good video breaking, breaking down, Creed Freeman. Um, and he had problems keeping the video up. So it's a lot to uh, get into. Uh, see, Sherry, we are being held hostage in Dalton. You know, I, this story has been basically, at this point, global. Uh, like, for instance, I don't live in Dalton. So there's a little bit background on myself. I don't live in Dalton. I live in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, with this channel, was it originally based on what I am currently talking about? Scams, predators, basically fraudsters, you know, people who commit fraud, um, political criminals. That's kind of where the channel is now. But first, before that, well, at this point, four years ago, I was doing videos about gig work. Um, I'm in New York City. Everything was locked down. I had nothing else to do other than sign up for Uber Eats account. And I just started making videos about it because I was also bored. So that video, you know, these series of videos kind of blew up to where the channel is, but kind of realized the, the, the content kind of pivoted to something else. And mostly because as a gig worker, you're always looking for ways to make money. You're always looking for new, you know, obviously ways to keep the, you know, obviously to pay the bills, considering a lot of us that are full time. So you try to look for what they call a new plays or investment opportunities or ways to make money. And I started to realize there are so many scammers out here, especially in the financial uh, uh, sector, where they just tell you, you can make all this money really fast. And that, that content, my content kind of started to go geared towards that, um, especially in New York City with uh, DJ Envy and his business partner, Cesar Pena, that just took millions of dollars out of hardworking people um, to promise them ridiculous returns in, in, real, in real estate that was not realistic. Um, it all failed. It looks like, well, definitely Caesar's going to federal jail. I think DJ Clue, DJ Clue. <laughs> not that DJ, um, but I, I think he's probably gonna have some issues too, um, not DJ Clue. But, so that's, that's kind of how my content kind of went into this direction, talking about scammers and fraudsters and stuff like that. So 
we're gonna be talking about Freeman. Um, we're gonna be talking about the the council meeting. So we're gonna get into that. Actually, we'll just get into it right now. Let me put this up. Let me see if I can find it again. So yeah, so it was a special board meeting that came out. Uh, they had it Wednesday, and they uploaded it today. So I was watching that earlier in the day, and obviously the you know the mayor couldn't show up. Probably she was busy. Maybe she's still in Washington D.C. I, I don't know, but she does. She was. She canceled the meeting, so they had to basically. I mean, with the Dalton trustees, I hope you guys um, subscribe to their channel. They're trying. Um, these people are fighting hard. This is not something that they're just taking lightly and laying down. I know a lot of comments I've seen from other people uh, that are not necessarily familiar with the situation, saying things like, "What you guys are doing? Why she's you know why this person is still in office?" They're trying to do it the right way. Sometimes the right way is slow, and it seems like people, I guess, people on the outside think that this this mayor just running wild and no one's there to stop it. They're trying to stop it. They're trying to bring the transparency. They're trying to get things in order. So they are trying, but it's really difficult when you know the most powerful people, the person you're going after is the mayor, right? So we're going to watch, or not watch, but I have some highlights from that special board meeting that I want to talk about real quick um, about some of the things they're trying to do. So obviously the trustees that were there were House, Brown, Norwood. Um, Obviously, Stan Brown wasn't there. Stan Brown wasn't there, uh, which is not that uh, hard to believe. So they talked about this one thing that I think is extremely important, trying to get an internal auditor. Um, the trustees are, they discussed uh, proving an audience to create an um, internal auditor, auditor position for the board of trustees uh, to provide independent oversight and ensure transparency. Because this is where it is, where they're, they're still suffering. They still can't get the necessary documents from the administration. Obviously, at this point, we all, we all realize that it's it's clearly they're doing this on purpose. Um, so they're trying to bring some transparency by having an independent auditor to check out what's going on and check out the books. Because I think as, at this point, um, vendors are not getting paid. Um, obviously, a little later on, they talk about um, settling a lawsuit involving attorneys who haven't been paid over 18 months. And they and they owe them. They owe these attorneys ninety six thousand dollars, basically, about ninety six thousand dollars. So where is the money? Where is it going? You know, this is where they have to go back and forth and fight with with this administration. I see a question already in the chat from B Metal. Appreciate you coming through. Is Tiffany still being investigated by the FBI? Yes, and. The FBI invest, you know, when you do an investigation, or at least as if I'm an FBI, these things take a long time, uh, probably too long. I mean, some of this stuff looks so obvious and so blatant, but the FBI, when they investigate, it takes a long time for them to get a case together, especially when they're going after a public figure. They have to make sure that they got all everything in order, whether you believe how the effectiveness of the FBI or not. But that is usually what is entailed when you have to investigate someone, especially for you know being a mayor. Um, so yeah, they're trying to, Tiffany will end up a point of, well, then that'll be a problem, right? If Tiffany, if Tiffany's, uh, you know, I'm sorry, the super mayor is in charge of a point of order, then yeah, it just won't, it just won't work. So hopefully they find an independent one to kind of sell these um, things. And then also they had something that I found was really interesting, an audience on the official village communication. As you guys may have already seen, if you've been following the story, Tiffany, Hanyard or Hanyard, whoever I, I think it's Hanyard, has billboards all over the village of Dalton. Big giant billboards with her face, um, with a lot well, of unnecessary. Like she does, she don't need to be on that graphic, but she's everywhere. And they are trying to set up an ordinance to restrict the use of elected officials' images and official village communications, which makes sense. Um, the ordinance, this ordinance, is aimed to prevent the use the use of Village funds for political motivation because what she's doing, it's pretty, it's pretty effective. It's kind of like you know a cult of personality. It's like what you see in other places of the world, especially in the past, where you just saw tons of posters and and billboards and statues and figures of a of this leader. So you always you always see this person. Either they're going to be where you see them in a billboard or you see them on a poster. 
it's a very effective way of uh, you know trying to get as much people on your side as possible. But the the village should not be paying for this. Like the, you know these these things are basically a subtle way to promote herself. Obviously, to always be around everywhere to a point where you, everyone knows who she is. She, uh, she may she seems nice. Look at the picture. She's smiling. She's talking about some senior services. Look at her picture. Oh, she's responsible for all of these things. So it's definitely an effective way of uh, trying to curry the favor of of the people there. But I don't think it's even working. Um, Mark says you don't need an internal order to know that Super Mayor is stealing from a community. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying about the trustees, they're trying to do everything in the right way. Um, they're not trying to skirt around and trying to find ways to do the same thing that the administration seems they, they're they're doing. So in that, in that, in that, it makes things pretty slow in that regard. Um, let me see. Uh, immigrants may be on their way to Dalton. Yeah, so they definitely they talked about that as well. It's interesting. Like I live in Brooklyn, New York. I definitely going to have to make a video about what we're going through in New York City, which is basically a disaster at this point. Um, and that's the problem. When you don't have any idea of what's going on with your financial standing of the village, they can't even figure out how to handle the situation because it's going to be all over the place, right? And they can't even you know, be sure that, you know what, our finances are in order, we have resources available in case this happens, and now they don't. Because you know they want to spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars on a Tahoe, you know, and go to all these places across the country, and then set up a tra charity that's not in good standing, and attorney general is after it. Like these, all these things are just a domino effect when you don't manage um, finances properly. So that's what we're going to be jumping in, talking about Keith Freeman, because um, this guy should not have been hired to to do anything. Um, if a simple background check, if someone was to hire Keith Freeman for, it doesn't matter, any company, any organization that has resources to provide, they have a lot of money, they're, and also they're entrusting you to you know, divide that money and divvy it up and be responsible, uh, be ethical, you will look at his background and not hire the guy. So, you know, how did he get hired? You know, well, we all, we kind of all know she's a, he's a friend of uh, the super mayor. Pedro in here. What's going on, Pedro? If you are into doing gig work, so this is my, this is my brother right here, Pedro DoorDash Santiago. If you are interested in learning about DoorDash, Uber Eats, all those gig apps, I'm sure many of you guys in the chat probably have either done it part-time or full-time, check out his channel. Uh, he will give you as much information as possible to make the best decisions with gig work. So if you want to jump in with that, and I'm sure there's a lot of gig workers in Illinois, obviously. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 um, Cherry says Dalton is not as dusty as the media has reported. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but it definitely doesn't help when you have someone that's running the show, not getting the stuff done. Like I said, the, all those vendors, like that's just irresponsible. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, MB Burke, hi from New York. Yep, same here in New York City, Brooklyn. Born and raised, been here. I'll be 40 in September. So, 40. Yeah, I'll be 40. Wow. Anyway, I'll be 40 in September, um, and I've been here all my life, born and raised. Um, so let's let's just get into um, what this. So I actually have two videos to show about Keith Freeman. Uh, we're gonna actually gonna listen to Keith Freeman in his own words. But first, I want to um, take out one of the highlights I saw from the meeting, talking about Keith Freeman, and I think it'd be a perfect intro to to explain why. We know now know that Keith Freeman is just as responsible, probably if not more, than the super mayor because I think at this point the super mayor is just following his lead. So let me show that real quick. And you spoke it before I could. I really think that Keith Freeman is really uh, a big part of you all not getting what you need to have. And just like y'all stood up and had a press conference for Dorothy Brown to get her out of here. The same thing needs to happen because we all feel this way. You all work for us. We do not want him as the administrator. He has allegedly has a, a background of financial crimes. Why would he even be hired? And he has a financial history of crime. You know, so. 
Well, that's even more reason why you all should work on getting getting him out of there because he's a, a big part of a lot of the stuff that's going on here, not uh, letting them have the information that they should, harassing our clerk. This man is doing too much. The last meeting we had, he came in here with the Dalton police. We don't even have protection. And this, this man is running around driving one of our cars. He should be driving his own car. Why is he driving a car? Uh, what's that? The car costs over a hundred and some thousand dollars. You know? So what I'm saying, we got to stand together as residents. We don't want him as the administrator. And we're telling the trustees because they work for us. We do not want him as administrator. And you guys got to do a press conference. I don't care what you do to get him out of here because he's a big problem. And that man had, had financial, uh, been doing financial crime since he was in his early 20s. And he's an IT guy. So he know how to hack and do all types of stuff. He's not the type of person that should be over the township. Well, the township, they trustees don't have no balls. But I know you all will do it, but they're not going to do it. So that's all I have to say. I know I come off strong, but I'm just so passionate. I love Dalton. I hate to see Dalton like this. We have never had this situation like we have now. And I think migrants coming here, and we don't even have police protection. What, they going to be doing OT over there at the Melody Fitness for the migrants? That's crazy. Where else they going to put them? In the old village hall? Yeah. You know? We should have a voice. They're supposed to vote on this. They should not be bringing migrants in here without voting. You cannot leave the trustees out. Period. They're breaking the law. So, good night, everybody. Thank you. All right. She was not playing. So, she kind of just put the entire thing into just that one statement. Keith Freeman, with his past, he should have never, ever, ever been hired um to be an administrator of anything uh of anything from a small nonprofit to a multi-million dollar corporation you would see his rap sheet and you wouldn't hire him it'd be too much of a risk it'd be too, it's too many red flags i'm not necessarily believe, you know saying that if you have a criminal history you can't be you know have redemption have a second chance but it depends on what you're talking about um, if someone has had a lot of issues with financial issues, failed businesses, and also unethical behavior, you shouldn't hire him for that job. It should be a different job. Maybe something he doesn't involve himself with money or any kind of valuable resources because his track record shows that you know he's not good on his word and also he doesn't know how to make money. So why would you put him in as a uh, as a, a person that is responsible? Um, with the resources of, of millions of dollars. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of kind of ridiculous. But I do believe that getting him out is probably, at this point, top priority. I mean, the, every day that he's here doing this, he's just ca causing more and more problems. He has police protection. He's running around in luxury SUVs. And everyone is here is worrying about what, what, what can happen if there's a lot of the migrants coming in. They don't have protection, but he's doing extremely well for himself. So it's very frustrating. You have to be frustrated if you're a resident there. You feel like things are not being done quick enough. It seems like Keith Freeman is laughing in their face, um, the way he kind of walks around. Again, we'll, we're actually going to play this video. Um, thank you to a, a really awesome Dalton resident that showed me this video. It has been out for a year, and it's Keith Freeman talking in his own words about his life and his history. Let me show you guys that real quick. Right here. Five minutes of faith testimony. Keith Freeman, faith, faith to follow God's calling. So this is going to be him in his own words for five minutes. We're probably going to listen to most of it. Um, talk, you know, because there's a lot that's been said about Keith Freeman. But what does Keith Freeman think about Keith Freeman? What does he think of himself? Is he going to talk about his criminal past and all the shady stuff he's been doing or allegedly supposed to be been doing? What is what is he going to say? about everything this actually is in it's, it's only a year yeah so it's been uploaded a year ago so we're gonna we're gonna play that real quick and see what what he thinks of himself uh, let me see if there's any other questions in the chat i oh, know uh appreciate you guys 194 so this is 
I never had 194 people in a live stream before. So this is awesome. Thank you guys. Hit the like. Um, check out the description box below to subscribe to the individual investor and Shaw Wayne Burns. They've been they've been doing a lot of heavy heavy lifting on uncovering a lot of this stuff. And I think that's why they're getting um their videos being taken down because they're going real deep with this dude's criminal past and someone is not happy about it. So appreciate you guys for coming through. Um let's let's play it. Let's play it. Keith Freeman in his own words. Wife and I. Um, we started a few businesses, um, a few retail stores. We hit sort of hit some challenges, some financial challenges. And um, I decided to walk away um, from a store that we created together. And I decided to go into an, another direction and start a hedge fund, uh, which was pretty cool because uh, I got to work with one of my friends. I probably got to get out of my wife's way because I was in the store with her all the time, probably bugging the heck out of her. And me and my buddy, we get together. We're like, oh, yeah, we're going to start this hedge fund. We start putting money together. We started filling out all the paperwork. We started talking to banks. And initially, everything was just going great. And we were just like, go, 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 go. We had people that were interested. And then all of a sudden, the brakes just hit. My wife and I, we had put sort of everything that we had into our... Why did the brakes hit? Like, what happened? How did the brakes hit? Like, what... what actually happened that i mean maybe explain it i don't know i didn't i mean i went i went through a few minutes of this um but you know like detail of what what went wrong so maybe we wouldn't fall on the same issue but uh, let's see if he explains it our businesses and so there wasn't very much left to sort of fall back on and say hey listen um you know what are we going to do um we, we had no idea, we had no clue. Um, and I had just come out, I had just stopped um, working as a public servant. I had worked for years uh, in a few municipalities and I had even told a bunch of my friends that I would never go back to it, uh, ever. The experience was just way too much. And so I had become- Why, this, why was it way too much? What, what, went, what went wrong, Keith, that it, it's way too much? Did you just make so many bad decisions not following the law like what what happened he's not really giving a lot of details in this uh five minutes of faith that you should be honest and transparent with yourself and what you did wrong uh, i assume if you're you know trying i don't know if that says a confession but you know if you're what happened like what exactly went wrong um let me let me mod for mod uh cherry let me see where is she where is she wait why i can't mod anyone what am I doing? I can't. I can't even mod. Am I signed into my right account? Wait a minute. Okay, there you go. All right. So yeah, Cherry, put it. Put the link in. So um, there's going to be a link. It's going to be pinned on the top of this chat. A petition to get Keith Freeman out of his position. Um, so when she types it, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a pin that. So. Let's 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 continue on with the video. I'm like primary daddy daycare. I have a son, he'll be three in a month, and I have a seven year old. So trying to manage those two little personalities, um, my daughter and my son, it was just crazy. And one day I'm sitting in the house and I had gotten a call from the same person. And he had said, Keith, you gotta come work in this town. And I'm like, I'll never work in that town. Then his wife called, cause his wife was the managing attorney for one of the cities. As a matter of fact, a couple of the cities. She was like, Keith, can you just think about it? No, I'm not thinking about it. I was just being stubborn. I was purposely trying to ruin God's purpose for me. And I knew I was. So I got a phone call, not from, you know, a congressperson, not from another elected official. I got a phone call from uh, a firefighter and he said, hey, listen, Keith, if you don't mind, uh, can you take like 10 minutes? Just, you know, we can meet wherever you want to just sit down with me. But something said, if I don't, if I don't pay attention and I don't listen, then I'm going to keep going this path. Who's he talking about? Why he didn't say the person? You know, you could name drop a person if it actually happened. Like, yeah, I talked to so and so. And that was the turning point. Like, who who are you talking about? Does this sound does it sound like this made up? I mean, his 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 history that will dictate that maybe, but like what who are you talking about? Sound like an owl. Who? who? So I go meet this guy 
at his firehouse and he tells me this incredible story about how God blessed him. You know, um, he was a public servant for years. He did a couple wrong things and it just led him in the wrong direction. But, you know, God is faithful. And he had overcome a zillion obstacles to become mayor of one of the largest municipalities in the south suburbs of Chicago. Before I left, what he told me was, is that you can try to run away from your purpose, but no matter where you go, God's going to put you there. And I believe that you are supposed to be a public servant. You're supposed to serve people. You're the person that God put here for those things. Um, and so I still wasn't trying to hear it. I'm being honest with you. I was like, yeah, I'm straight. I hear you. Um, I didn't tell him to kick rocks, but in the car, I was thinking kick rocks. I really was. I'm sitting at home the very next day. The very next day, it couldn't have been, you know, like 24, it wasn't even 24 hours. So the next morning, me and my son, again, I'm playing daddy daycare. My son and I, we get down and we pray. And I'm like, God, if whatever you want me to do, like, I'll do it. And like right then, I got a phone call from my new boss, uh, who was really, really dope. Like, I just couldn't mess with God's will. I just couldn't mess with his purpose for my life. All right, let me skip along, because, I, I mean, what, what exactly, oh, actually. Everything I wanted for compensation. He gave me everything I wanted for benefits. And ever since then, um, there has been a roller coaster of great things that have happened to me, my wife, uh, my boss, and has just taken me to different places and opened doors for me that I would never, ever be able to open for myself. So I may be stubborn, but I understand uh, how much God has blessed me and my family, uh, my friends, and I am extremely grateful for everything he's done. Every day now, um, I go through the prayer of Jabez, um, my wife. That's great. That's great. That's great. Not a lot, not a lot of like detail on that one, but that's what Keith Freeman um, thinks of himself. Um, there was some some ups and downs, he, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, didn't necessarily put a lot of uh, details on what's going on. But the problem is there's a lot of problems with, with this dude. A lot of issues with the, a lot of the misconduct, conduct, basically. And he seemed like he's the one that's bringing a lot of this problematic energy uh, here in, in the town of Dalton. So let's go right into it. In terms of his criminal history, and this is the video yesterday that Sean Wayne Burns, like she went all in on this guy. Um, and the video was, take, was taken down, um, the, 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 which is interesting because I don't think she said anything inaccurate. I mean, she's just reading some of these documents here of his lengthy criminal record. So I don't know necessarily what went wrong with the video. Um, I guess she, when she figured out what's going on, she'll talk, talk about it as well. Um, but also, they, there's another, actually, let me, let me see. Actually, I'm looking up this. Um, so back to what what the the um, lady in the special meeting said that he has criminal activities going back twenty four years, a misdemeanor in two thousand, uh, a theft charge in the fifth degree. Uh, oh, you know, over the years, reportedly faced multiple charges, including aggravated misdemeanors. So it looked like basically a career criminal is this this guy, a like a career criminal how do you put a career criminal in like this guy like how did he were able to get this job even to be a janitor to to be someone cleaning like i wouldn't i don't know if i would hire someone with this kind of background and obviously the fact again going with the financial crimes or just his financial management skills he he ha he's been he has a uh, child filed for ch uh, chapter seven. So if if you have such terrible, I mean, again, we all go through bankruptcies. We all have our financial issues. But the problem is, I wouldn't take a job managing a city's finances because shit, my finances are not one hundred percent great. I know I wouldn't try to put myself in a position to manage other people's money when I'm still trying to get my stuff together. But if this guy has th that many issues, who, who, why would he be hired? You know, why would you put a fox to guard the henhouse? Like, why would you do that? 
because obviously you're friends with the Superman, so you you are able to do that. Um, actually, I have a clip from the individual investor. Let me let me put that in there. Um, just kind of breaking down some of his issues that we've already been talking about property because of the village of Dalton. I believe this video has become much more relevant because after all, she did mention Keith Freeman. I've had comments in my previous videos asking why I don't do any FOIAs with Dalton or Thornton Township. And the answer is they're blocking them. And Keith Freeman is one of the responsible parties for doing that. And a lot of the games you've heard happening at the Dalton board meetings, well, Keith has been a responsible party in those too. Like blocking public comments, for example. And just like Tiffany, Keith has two jobs, one at the Thornton Township and one for the village of Dalton. And he's collecting two salaries, just like Tiffany. And just like we've seen the residents of Dalton try to recall Tiffany, the residents have also tried to remove Keith Freeman. And just like Tiffany, they ultimately failed. Keith is also a part of the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation, which is the charity I believe she set up that doesn't really exist. Anyways, he's the registered agent for it. And just like you have businesses suing Tiffany, well, Keith happens to be involved in some of those lawsuits too, like this Rucker Holdings. And I'll talk about this more later. And the point is with Keith, he appears to be the mayor's side chick. Anywhere <laughs> she goes, he goes. She gets a job at Thornton Township, Keith gets a job at Thornton Township. So I want to <laughs> play a few clips from this video. Um, so just just a, again more of what a lot of people have already been saying in terms of the connection we you know we all know that superman she has a criminal history um and he seems to just have a lot of, he, you could tell he seems like a scammer I mean, I, you know i mean allegedly a scammer scammers try to bounce from one way to make money to the next i think what happened is he, he tried a bunch of companies that didn't necessarily work and then he said you know he had a lifeline to able to get into politics. And then obviously he's, he's with uh, Tiffany there. And yeah, perfect thing to say, uh, gig giggity. Thick as thieves. I mean, obviously they're not going to turn away from each other. I mean, maybe. I know I saw a comment on, uh, I think it was like Facebook about, well, if the FBI gets to Freeman, what is he going to do? Is he going to try to save himself? I mean, I, I would say he probably will. So who knows how tight they're tight right now, but when you know when the investigations are getting close and people can actually get some jail time, or you know, maybe you know, some people may start turning on each other. So um that's definitely something that's that can um happen. Um so in some of these bankruptcy filings, filings, uh, Freeman is accusing of is accused of not reporting all of his income. Um uh, Obviously, he he's basically not rep um, representing his financial issues and dealings, and that's all typical kind of stuff where you're dealing with someone who is doing this kind of thing, being being a scammer. Uh, professor, 1934 said he is going to sit. Probably, I mean, that's the thing about the whole politics. Sometimes the line between the people who are in power and the criminals it's very like a fine line. Um, sometimes some people believe that. Some people in politics act just like a gang compared to the people in the in the streets. It's just a little different in terms of when things go wrong, what they're going to do. You know, there's tons of informants because people are they snitch on each other on the street all the time. I mean, that's how cops even figure out what's going on. So I'm thinking in terms of this situation where everyone is not being honest, people are trying to hide. When the light comes on, you know, the roaches start to scatter. They may say, "Hey, listen, that one did all the work. I didn't do anything. I, I was just following orders." That kind of that kind of thing. Um, Sherry says he was hired as a benefited employee and then changed himself into a 1099. Wow, this is a, that's a really slap in the face of independent contractors. I mean, that's just that's the, you know the bulk of my channel is all independent contractors. And the last thing we want to do is deal with any kind of scamming and corruption. And I definitely probably will still make some videos about what we have to deal with with the gig economy because there definitely is some exploitation happening so that definitely need to shine a light but that's a different whole uh video upon itself so i got another video talking about keith freeman and more information uh about the fail the failed businesses and sure enough 
we actually find some investment related businesses. Like for example, we have this company right here, Collab Equity Crowdfunding Incorporated. Now, technically speaking, this business right here was never legally allowed to operate. And I'll get back to that in a minute. I know for certain this is the same exact Keith Freeman because they used the same exact address to register this business as they did the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation. This company has also operated under multiple different names. In 2019, it went by Collab Leaders Inc. And in 2021, it went by Freeman Ventures LTD. And usually ventures, that's more business and financial related, real estate related, stuff like that. Then it operated under multiple different assumed names as well. Collab Equity Investments Incorporated, Minimus Watch Company, G Suite Resellers. Huh? So <laughs> we have six different names tied to this business, and it was in business for six years. Almost makes you wonder if they are operating under a different name every single year. I want to go back to Collab Equity Crowdfunding Inc. Because this was the original business that he set up. And I can say beyond reasonable doubt that this business makes no sense because Keith couldn't legally operate it. If he took any money from crowdfunding, he actually committed a crime. And this isn't me saying that. This is the rules. In 2016, the Jobs Act was released. And it allowed crowdfunding intermediaries, known as crowdfunding portals, or crowdfunding platforms to assist companies with raising capital using the internet. And this becomes relevant because, well, Keith's business was formed after the Jobs Act. In yeah, so more of just a sign that this guy was should not be in any meetings. I believe well, I, I missed that comment from Sherry. Definitely should not have been involved in any meetings. Like this is this is ridiculous. How does even pot like, again? How is how is it even possible that he would be involved with that kind of background as a as administrator? I'm gonna hire you as administrator. I've I, you know this takes a simple background check. I'm obviously in terms of political office, and you know this guy was not elected. Clearly, to be hired, you have to go through some kind of background check, and you see all that. But obviously, it it was something that uh was ignored on purpose. Because that's her homie, and homies help each other out. You know, it, 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 it's um, uh, Michael B. Garrison. He was in the military under the dome. <laughs> really? I have no, really? I didn't, I, I haven't seen that information. Um, but also, any information you guys have um, about any of this, uh, any other stories that you find interesting that you think I should talk about, um, the email is Hannibal at HannibalIsHungry.com. Um, I'll put that in the description box below. Um, we'll see if this video actually stays up. Hit the like. Uh, it's possible that they may go through this video and I may get hit with some kind of review as well. So I'll have the full video on the Patreon just in case um, this video gets taken down or something like that. But um, PD2781, he claims to be in the Army but was honorably discharged. Okay. I uh, definitely probably have to do some uh, some digging with that situation. See if there's any any issues that they had uh, with Keith Freeman because it seems like everywhere he's gone. And remember, and see the difference between his history with the businesses that he's been doing and changing names and trying to do some um, finessing to the video that he was talking about right there. Um, the, you know, five minutes of faith, where he's talking about you know this it, I, I did something, but it just wasn't working out and. You know, now I'm in public office and I've been, you know, I'm blast and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, you didn't really provide a lot of the information of what you did. That was wrong. Um, so I th let me check. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. So another thing that uh, there's a video that the, just, the Dalton J trustees did a couple of weeks ago about Dr. Let me, sure I get the, let me sure I get the right. Uh, Dr. Scott, I believe. Let me let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Let me pop. Let me pop that up for you guys real quick. Uh, 
So yeah, um, the mayor of Dalton blocks growth in Dalton. So, and this involves Keith Freeman. Um, everything seems to involve Keith. He's, he seems like he's everywhere. He's all over the place. Seems like he gets himself in, he has his hands and everything. So I'm going to show you guys some of uh, the back and forth that's going on with um, Dr. Scott and what she's trying to do to what Keith Freeman is trying to do foot strip mall on 142nd and King Drive with a vision to revitalize the area, to create the ABBA Recreation and Resource Center. Yet despite her best efforts, progress stalls. Mayor Tiffany Henyard and her administrator Keith Freeman halts her plans, denying permits crucial for community growth and development. I went and got my pastor and he went and got Keith Freeman and another gentleman. It was supposed to be the four of us who were going to go in together and purchase this property to uh, do some really good work in the community. I thought that that was the way to go. Um, you know, I spoke with Keith Freeman about it and he says, well, you know, uh, the owners have so many things that they need to do with the property, so on and so forth. Um, but the deal fell through. It didn't work. They, they want me to lose the property. They want me to uh, not be able to pay the taxes or pay the bills and lose the property. I know the mayor talks about how she wants to make progress. And initially, we wanted to do that with her. However, because of their interest in the property, there has not been any assistance for us. So basically, it's it's we're not going to help give up so we can take this property and try to make as much money out of it as possible. Um, you know, Dr. Scott is trying to build a 83,000 square foot uh, community outreach center. And the two people who are blocking it are the super mayor and Keith Freeman. As uh, the super mayor likes to put on her propaganda videos during, you know, before, you know, as the meetings, um, go on the way she puts it in showing that she's doing this and she's building this and she's doing all these fantastic awesome things uh able to go to washington dc and TikTok the entire uh time that she's hanging out there and this person is actually doing some um, amazing work trying to build and uplift the community and they are in her way it's 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 pretty sad to see someone trying to figure something out and because it looks like Keith Freeman is involved with this property deal that he does not want uh, to have for her to have it. I mean, what other reason for this to continue? Um, I don't know if Dr. Scott was uh, just, you know, did she say anything about uh, the super mayor in the past? It looks like, you know, Tiffany does tend to use the police to provide some level of intimidation to people who don't vote for her or who criticize her in the past. You can see how she's treating the other trustees. Uh, not you know canceling meetings. The way the meetings go back and forth, very contentious, very nasty. The way um, she talks to the trustees, sometimes even Keith Freeman. And you guys can check out the. Uh, I'm sure the next the next meeting, Cherry. You, let me know uh, what when is the next meeting that uh, the the mayor is going to be there. Uh, maybe I'll live stream it. it you know, there it's very very intense, and it's a lot of you know lecturing and finger wagging coming from the the mayor and then the Keith Freeman kind of jumps in and you know just like what the individual individual investor said he is the side like the, he is the, the 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 side chick if you want to use that term the side dude um agreeing with everything that she's saying showing no no ability to say hey this is a bad idea maybe we should do this or do that it looks like they're just together to continue to do whatever they want to do um, I got to figure out the date of the next meeting. Um, professor, what'd she say? But yeah, uh, I mean, it's just, a, it's a, someone used the, uh, the reality show Parks and Rec to compare uh, this situation, the way Tiffany, uh, the way Mayor Tiffany Hayard uses social media and she wants to get as famous as possible. Like I said, I've never seen someone so happy when they went to the White House and had that TikTok and she's smiling and taking pictures. Um, it, it just seems like, well, you know, the way she looked 
it seemed like she had everything in order back home. Like everything is in order. Everything is running smoothly. Everyone is getting uh, along as, as best as possible. The vendors are getting paid. Everything is transparent. I can go out and enjoy myself in Washington, D.C. And that's like the total opposite. Like everything is all screwed up. Like how are you even out there smiling? It's kind of hilarious. Um, uh, really good question here. Um, can you tell me how American politics allow this to happen? I'm from Canada. If my mayor did this, people would be trying to get them removed right away. They, they've tried to remove. So they have they had recalls. There was an issue with the recall where they tried to put the referendum to recall and then the recall vote in the same election. I think uh, obviously the the judge the the courts deemed that that was not uh, I guess something you can do, uh, and that that recall failed. But in terms of American politics, I mean I think it is. I feel like it's it's based just it's based on human nature, and in, in, in some aspects of people trying to get as much power as possible. Um, the people who have the most resources command the most power, and once money is involved, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or even millions of dollars are involved, you will notice people flipping and doing things to ensure they get as much of those resources as possible. Also, you have to you have, also have to think of, or think about um, who wants to be a politician or a CEO of a company, or who wants those powerful positions. Usually the people who get those powerful positions have the kind of personality of wanting to be the best, to be the strongest person in the room, that had that type A personality. And if you're a type A personality, but you also are uh, unethical and you don't care about hurting over the next person, this is where it comes to be. And I think that's where American politics is. The corporations run the country. They have the money. They have the influence, the lobbyists. And the politicians are just kind of dancing to who gives them the most money or has the most influence. Because at this point, if you want to be elected to anything, you need money, you need lots of it. I mean, some of the campaign costs here in our country is ridiculous. Like there's billionaires pumping millions of dollars into a candidate and, and there'd be no way for this person to come up with that kind of funds on their own or even do it, you know, crowdfunding the people in the community. So that's where it is. I mean, that's a, I guess it's a long winded answer that, American politics has a lot of issues, and and for some odd reason, the state of Illinois. And I'm sorry, guys, but it's a lot of a long history of corruption, and corruption is everywhere. It's everywhere, but it's a lot of corruption, and it just seems like it's a weird pattern of the the certain type of person who decides to be a mayor or a senator, or you know, like. It's always something or a governor, like it's something where it definitely uh, goes the wrong way. Um, dresses as Neil Brown. <laughs> yeah, that was that. That's probably the one video that kind of grabbed me into this story when I started doing videos on her. The the gall, like the the audacity, to go into a meeting and and act like you're Neil Brown and not have the like the self awareness to realize like Neil Brown was a crack dealer. Like he was a crack dealer that took over a projects in New York City to sell crack and have people in the, the worst positions ever. It, he wasn't he wasn't a hero. <laughs> he wasn't a like a you know politician. He wasn't the mayor. He was a crack dealer that was making millions of dollars a week. So it doesn't make sense. So why would she decide to cosplay as Nito Brown? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, uh, Aaron has the yeah, yeah. It it it, it was just done. It was like it's, it's a technicality, basically, right? I mean, and they and, and that and that recall did had I think it had fifty six percent. Like it it had enough people to say yeah yeah get this person out of here. I don't think this is working out. Um, you could find political drama in any small town. Yes, Giggity, and I've been realizing that now since I've done a few of these videos 
based on um, the you know mayor, super mayor, and others, that there is a lot of mayors doing terrible things. It's kind of baffling. Um, and you know, obviously, it's not you know, I'm, sh I'm sure it probably is major cities, but small cities in America where people are just like ripping everyone off. Or I did this video uh, about uh, in, in Killeen, Texas, where just like in this, the, you know, people were able in, the, in that special meeting to speak their mind, express themselves, talking about people in administration, criticizing people in administration, and people were able to do that, right? But this mayor in Texas, she has voted seven to zero, so all the people with her, to eliminate any non-agenda items. And, and basically, the reason why is because when people, some of the residents, talk about some of those non-agenda items, they're talking about a situation where they were able to uncover um, a newspaper, basically an audio of her talking to the local paper in her town. And she's saying that she is comfortable around minorities. Now she's black, but she's basically saying that I trust minorities more. And also talking about how to make herself look better in terms of this meeting. It's a small newspaper and this is legit audio that they, that they were able to hear and they wanna to talk to her about it. And there's other issues as well, other uh, corruption in that, in that place. And she stopped any non-agenda. So when someone comes up, try to speak, and if it's not about the agenda, they sh sh you know, tell them to shut up or shut them down. I'm sure they probably get like law enforcement involved because they don't want to hear that criticism because it makes them look bad. So it, it's happening all over the country, um, unfortunately. Uh, Aaron says, if we find out they're dating, does this turn into a RICO case? Interesting. Interesting. Um, I believe she has um, a dude, and I think the dude is on the payroll, if I, if I remember correctly. So everyone is getting paid. It's, it's like a mob. It's like, a, you know, those criminalizations. You, you know, you, you, you bring your, your people, you bring your, your, your folks, regardless if they are... Uh, Qualified clearly because Keith Freeman is he's not qualified for that job um, And then also Tiffany Hayard hiring a sex offender. Why because that's her friend She didn't bother to check a background check or any background check and he's oh, that's my that's my friend that's my homeboy bring him in despite the fact that he had um, You know a sexual offender like no, it just does it just so certain things she, she does to make sure that her people are taken care of and The people who are against her she she does what she does Um, yeah, uh, talking about the you know, own security force where millions of dollars to protect her. And, and I know now with her, I know she will complain and say, well, you know, all the lies that have been talked about, about me, uh, especially people who look like me. She said this in the last, uh, meeting that she was there, you know, basically assuming that only, you know, the, you know, black people are either the content creators or people who just talk and criticizing her. That we take tearing her tearing her down and that's supposed to be our people some nonsense like that but she's saying that she probably needs the protection now because a lot of her misdeeds are national now or international at this point i mean i was when i saw the last uh big meeting when she was there i mean there's people in that live stream shot from everywhere like jamaica like everywhere because this story is to be honest it's kind of hard to believe that this is happening you know um Actually, what's I have one more video uh, talking about K Freeman. Let's play this. I forgot what I let me see if I find what, what it was about. I think it's oh, just more financial crimes on Keith Freeman. So let's play this real quick. Institution or a stockbroker. Now, what my research in this taught me is crowdfunding portals, they're considered like a financial institution or a stockbroker. It's like somewhere in between. They have government oversight by FINRA and the SEC. So if you're a legit crowdfunding portal, you're going to be able to pull up that registration with FINRA. Now, when you go on FINRA's current list of crowdfunding portals, there's obviously no mention of this company. And when we go through the list of former crowdfunding portals, which this company should be on if they were a legit crowdfunding company, yeah, no, it's not there. It never existed. Finding this tends to make me believe that Keith Freeman is most likely the person they're talking about that's been convicted of financial crimes. 
Now, I can't find any proof of this, but this is Illinois. It's easy to get things expunged and sealed, so that could have very well happened. But what we do know is he did start up an illegal crowdfunding business. This cannot be denied. This is fact. Now, I know a lot of people from Dalton have seen these videos. So, Keith, if what I'm saying is false, produce your FINRA and SEC documents, please. Now, the last thing I want to bring up about Keith is this business right here, because it looks highly... Now, what I my research check that other one out, but yeah, I mean, eventually he's gonna have to come up with some receipts of some of his past dealings, at least to keep the job. I think of enough citizens, enough residents come and say, "Hey, at least, okay, he should be fired. He should be removed." But all right, come forward with all of the information that you have about your past. And, and be transparent, which I think that word, I don't think that word is in their vocabulary. Like they probably can't even say it, it you know, they get like upset if they even friggin', they probably start shaking just to say the word. Um, yeah, they, like they, 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 you know, the ability to even say transparency gets them probably violently ill. Um, but if, if you want to keep this job and double dipping, you know, you still have the two positions, come up with, explain. Just explain, explain your past, explain this crowdfunding business, the, uh, the other business, staffing business, like explain all these issues. All right, like your criminal past from whatever, I mean, if obviously those things need to be talked about as well. Um, but yeah, bring some receipts on why should the people in Dalton keep you around? Because it doesn't look like you should be there. Um, I think I saw, yeah. KD, uh, they took Sean, uh, Sean a, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's possible that this video may come down. I'm gonna still leave it up. I'm leaving it up until, um, you know, whatever decides to take it down, take it down. And uh, But the full video will still be on the Patreon. And we, we, you know, we gotta, we're just asking questions now. We wanna know what is going on. And if these things are true, he should not be hired. He should be let go. And in fact, any, the, the days that he's still there just hurts the super mayor more. Um, they just did. Um, D Dave, people asking why the feds haven't jumped. They won't go in until they know they can stick football numbers. Then they'll go after everyone. Yeah, I, th I mean, once they got enough to where they could just go storming in, then yeah, th then the you know the indictments are coming in, you know. That things will get really, really. Um, she's not, you know, the super mayor is not going to have a good time when the feds come in. Um, the feds don't play, uh, either, even if you like, you like, you know, the, you know, FBI or not, you know. Let's see. Yes, the feds. The feds are always watching. The feds are always watching. Um, Let's see. Yeah, and that's another a good comment from Professor. Everyone is making. Yeah, it is. Is it is like a it's a it's a hustle. They're hustling the people of Dalton of how of what they're doing, how they even um, just able to just snatch all these resources to travel the country to set up fake charities to buy these luxury vehicles, to you know, hold, hold someone that's trying to do something positive for her community, hold that property hostage, um, waiting for her to quit so they can uh, snoop up and take it. They, it seems like what happened was, it's kind of similar to me and devil eggs. If you leave a, a, a plate of devil eggs and say guard it, it's gonna be, it's hard for me to not take one. I think what happened is with Freeman and, and Tiffany Hayard here, they were entrusted with all of this resources and money. And since they are, have criminal histories of, at least with Keith Freeman, theft, and obviously with, actually with her too, breaking into a property, going into places that they don't, you know, don't belong to her, properties that she doesn't belong to, they went crazy. They went absolutely insane. And when other people, you know, other the trustees said, "Hey, uh, what's going on with the money? Like, what's happening here? Like, hey, you stop giving us receipts and transactions. What's what's going on? Does the vendors are asking for money? We can't pay lawyers. What's up?" 
And then she just, you know, lock, everything locked down. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to be really condescending and rude to you every time we speak. And that's the current state of what's going on. I mean, that that's just, that's basically what it is. That's where we are, unfortunately. Um, let's see. I, I want to, I, I know, oh, so. Really? Uh, just got more information about um, Kif, uh, Super Mayor's boyfriend. So, and I'll, I'll look into this and uh, maybe in the next live, we'll kind of break this down. But it's possible that, or it's probably likely, that Super Mayor has a boyfriend and he has a, a six figure job at the township. Interesting. I would like to know his credentials, um, his expertise, um, his job history. Um, has he ever earned six figures before he was hired by his girlfriend? You know, kind of like with a key Friedman. Have you built successful businesses? Do you have a, a you know, an ethical, clean record before we decide to make you an administrator? These are really the, the kind of questions. Um, yes, Gary. Uh, yeah, six figures. It's uh, her, her boyfriend has a six-figure position. So all this inflated salaries. And then they, you know, they turn around like, oh, we don't have any money. It's like, yeah, because you're paying a lot of people who don't deserve it a lot of money. Uh, Larry Matthews say, if more white business owners would complain, it would wouldn't take no time for indictment. You know, the interesting thing. Um, oh, I, I, actually, I gotta look at this. Uh, so Michael, Michael coming in with some with some info. His application was blank. He. Uh, had a FOIA request. He is a youth director with 100K a year with a GED. Wow, that's a come up, huh? That's a come up. So yeah, GED, and now he's making six figures. As a youth director, he must be the best youth director of the country. Like, if there is, he's, he's a LeBron James of, uh, of, of youth directing. Well, at this point, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll say, We'll say he's the Luca of so all the youths in this area must be doing fantastic because you you hired one you give him six figures he must be amazing I, I'm just if I'm just going by that and he must have turned his life around after that GD I mean I don't know other degrees he has usually people with six figures they have you know that at least a college degree or some advanced degrees graduate degrees. At least, especially when it comes to, you know, these kind of jobs where you're getting hired by administrations and politicians and stuff like that. Usually people who are hired have a long history of going to school. But that's interesting. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael. Definitely would check that out. We'll definitely put that up, uh, kind of break that down. That's not good. That is mafia stuff. And this is a long history. And that's the thing that FBI, I think they're just waiting and like waiting and waiting and collecting every wrong thing that they see. So when they hit the, with that, the, you know, with that indictment, uh, it's going to be really, really tough to get out of it. You know, she's not going to be able to kind of wiggle her way because they're, they're going to hit her with so many uh, charges. Um, Theonius Johnson, I don't see no way Tiffany going to win a re-election unless she's using the taxpayers to give free money out. I mean, I remember when she got uh, elected in the first place that she was giving out free gas. And it was there was a question of, um, like, is that even something you should be doing? Because um, that's something that is influential in terms of voting, where you're giving people, you're paying for votes, basically. When you say free gas, gas is money, gas is expensive. And she was throwing that out. And there was some ethical questions being raised uh, when she first got elected with that there. Um, I'm, on, I'm on the outside, so I'm not there. I don't know. It, to me, it's like, how, would she, how can she get reelected? But at the same time, I'm not there. I'm not sure if enough people, I would hope enough people are understanding the situation. I think the Alton Trustees YouTube channel is, a, is amazing. Um, they are content creators. I mean, I don't know who's, putting the videos together, um, just breaking things down, going, you know, from kind of cutting down like the long uh, meetings and cutting them down into explaining stuff, showing receipts, showing what exactly is going on. 
I mean, they did a fantastic job of promoting um, the real and showing that they're fighting because there are other places, guys, where no one is fighting. They're letting the mayor do whatever they whatever the mayor wants to do. In this situation, there is a, a group that's fighting back. So that's 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 good. Um, yeah, KD says when the alphabet people come, they can come correct. There'll be no room to wiggle. Um, I'll put I'll put my email in the chat. I'll put it in my description as well uh, for you guys. So any information you guys want to um, talk, uh, bring up, if additional information, um, criticism, whatever, um, and also ideas of other people and what they're doing wrong. Let me know. I know eventually I want to talk about my city and what's going on here uh, with uh, Eric Adams and his struggle to deal with the migrant situation. I think his administration will be defined on how he figures this out. Um, he has made many mistakes. Um, there's also some things that he couldn't control. But I definitely want to talk about that because that's something even with Dalton may have to deal with. And I think, it's going to, I think a lot of places who didn't think they were going to deal with this situation will have to deal with it. And you want to have effective leadership in place so things would be as smooth as possible or things can be going as smooth as possible compared to having a dysfunctional government where it's, it's all effed up. Uh, thank you, Sherry. We'll definitely, we definitely will. Um, any, all information is, is obviously important. We want to get things correct. We want to make sure that we have, uh, um, obviously the enough information so everyone can, Make their own minds too. I mean, I, I've seen it's probably like one percent of positive, um, of, I guess positive feedback from from the super mayor, like someone defending. I think maybe one one comment I have read of probably thousands of comments in, uh, have, uh, right now based on um, this situation. And also, you know, um, I guess before we kind of end this real uh, end this live real quick. Um, Gary had this, I'll put this in here. Um, is this a test run on the black community to see how the black community respond to certain leadership? There's a few, there's a few comments that I have noticed, um, quite often actually of, um, on TikTok and on YouTube, a lot on TikTok as well though, just like blatant racism, like racism shit, like, oh, this is how black people behave. Oh, this is this is when black you know black leadership comes in, uh, BLM with you know, like like and then I'll say this right now: if that's your belief, um, you're not really you know this ain't the channel for you if you think that you think that, uh, especially if black people are criticizing her. How is it just all you know? I think so. One person said uh, talking about black women shouldn't be in leadership is like. This ain't the channel for you. So if you come across these video, you know, video and some of the comments I do leave to show kind of, you know, because it would be easy just to hide it or delete it, to show that this is this is out here. And most of them usually what happens is there's no face. It's you know, it you know, you can't see who they are. Um, sometimes there's a bunch of spelling. I know YouTube now you can put comments without um, logging in. So there's a lot of stuff that you know it's kind of weird. I'll say that, but I kind of leave the comments up because I want everyone to know, like, this is how some people feel about the situation. But I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, Dwayne says, "Come deal with the situation in Texas." Uh no, things are. I'm sure you have a lot of some issues in Texas. I mean, I'm in New York, so like, I know you guys. I know Texas is bringing bringing some of the migrants over to New York, and New York can't handle it. Uh, so we are, we're all dealing with some of us. I mean, I would say Texas is a big difference between what's going on here in New York, but I think we all, we're all dealing with it. Um, great comment here from Brent. This is hundred percent, not a racial issue. Corruption isn't a color. It's a sin and it exists everywhere. Exactly. So it's just weird that we, you know, some people have different approaches to when they see something of corruption. Um, I understand. I, I don't understand the the Democrat versus Republican thing. I definitely understand that. You know, I'm not necessarily even going to be arguing about that um, because both sides think that the other side is the most corrupt ever. I mean, that's where we are. I think that's why our things are so um, contentious with the you know obviously the left and right. Both 
think that they're here, they're, they're, that they're their hero, like they're saving the country. Both sides, one is, you know, they both believe that they're doing it, and they think the other side is trying to destroy the country. And this is why they, you know, they're bumping heads. But when they talk about uh, her, her color, skin color, doesn't make any sense, especially when you see so much opposition um, talking about regardless of color. Well, what's, what's, what's the problem here? So that was just some, you know, something I just wanted to bring up real quick that just, you know, if that, that's how you believe and that's how you carry yourself, like, you know, you obviously always could check out the challenge. But at the same time, I don't agree with that. Um, and this ain't the place for that. So you won't be seeing me necessarily uh, pushing that uh, uh, that kind of nonsense out here. There's tons of YouTube channels that go into that race stuff, and you can you can definitely get your fill uh, with that one. Uh, Turbo Gig Wolf, uh, we vote people who are educated and can be trusted to make fair, honest decisions for the best of that town, and that's and that's. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, get the best person for the job. Um, I still believe that that should be for every position, every job. Who is the best equipped, regardless of who it is? Who's the best equipped there? Um, and I just, you know, and that's a problem when you're hiring your friends. You know, you know your friends and what your friends are capable of doing. Uh, if I had a friend with a criminal history, I would not recommend that friend to work. Um, somewhere where like in a bank or something like that where they're not going to get they're not going to get that job um especially if they committed something related to stealing in the past like it just doesn't make any sense uh i wouldn't pull strings i wouldn't try to get them that position because it just looks bad on me if i'm I'm leadership and i'm hiring these people i'm giving a, a youth director 100k a year and they're, you know, we're sleeping together those those don't seem like really sound judgment uh, coming from the mayor. Uh, Michael says, I support uh, Jason House next election. He's a solid brother. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I hopefully one of these days I'll be able to talk to some of these trustees. Um, he definitely seems like he, he has a lot of patience. I, I'll give that to him. Um, he, when, you know, even when he's going back and forth with, with the super mayor, he tries to keep it as even kill as he, like as professional as he can. And you know that he would love to get a little bit more rowdy, right? Like, but that's what you need. I think that's what you need in government. You don't, you kind of need to be able to practice that level of patience, bringing the, you know, that, that emotional level down. Obviously, it's a very uh, passionate situation. A lot of people are upset. And to kind of still, be even kill. I mean, that's what you need as a as a leader. You need to be able to kind of stay not too high, not too low, but at a level where you're able to make the best decisions for for your community. Um, let's see. You, <laughs> I'm, thank you. Ed, uh, if that's if that's what you're referring to, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I did see that too. Um, you can't do that. It just looks so bad when what I think should happen in any kind of town hall, and this is happening with Keeling, Texas as well. Like, you may you may have to deal with a resident that may say something, and I'm not even talking about that situation, but maybe very provocative and say something kind of rude or kind of disrespectful. But as as the leadership. Sometimes you kind of be able to be a bigger person and kind of let them talk, let them get it out of the system. I think, you know, one thing I've learned uh, back in the day when I used to deal with customers, especially when they're upset, is obviously don't take it personal, but let them get it out. If they're upset with something you've done, even if it's true or not, let them get it out. If it's not true, you may be able to explain it. But if it is true, you, you did do something wrong. Just like that, that woman passion, like you need to get, guys need to get Keith Freeman out of here. We hired you. Get it done. I mean, the trustees are elected. Get it done. This is outrageous. We're seeing all this information about his criminal history. He should not be running. They let her talk because they're like, you know what? They probably agree. And they realize, yeah, we. this is what people have these town halls for, for them to be able to express themselves. Um, but guys, this as I, I was gonna go for an hour, you know, we got 115. Uh, I really appreciate you guys for coming in. Um, it was a, I know it was a lot to take in, a lot of information. Um, I will be 
back, I think when they do another meeting and, and, and Tiffany, you know, Super Mayor is here, I think we'll do a live stream, uh, maybe do like a live react on what's going on, what they're saying. Um, obviously do some, some, some fact finding. I know the chat has been fantastic on kind of bringing out a lot of information. There's so much information to kind of come together and bring together to kind of, this story has been obviously years and years kind of built up, but I appreciate you guys for coming through. Um, obviously uh, hit the like, everything. I don't know if this video will be here, uh, but it will be on the Patreon. I'm gonna just put this video on there just in case um, they take this video down. Uh, but again, appreciate you guys for coming through. And um, all that new information about the boyfriend, uh, some, I know I'm, I'm getting a few emails. We'll definitely bring this back um, next week. Whether there's a meeting or not, we'll probably be back here kind of breaking down some more information, uh, what's going on, because the more we talk about it, the more it gets there. I mean, Fox News was able to cover it. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, Fox News is going, talking about this situation. I know it doesn't matter, you know, yes, Fox News is conservative uh, news station, but whatever. Wrong is wrong. And the fact that they were able to talk about that and her getting on some other national publications is the amazing. This is what you need to kind of keep things going. So don't let out. Um, sign up the petition, guys, if you haven't, to remove Keith Freeman. I think there's enough information to at least bring doubt. I think, personally, I think he needs to go. But to bring doubt and to get more um, eyes on the situation, to force the mayor to fire this guy. So I think that's what we can do try to get the force this mayor to basically show or be shown all these issues with this guy and force her force him to move it so that's that's the that's the plan but uh appreciate you guys for coming through thank you pedro for hanging out thank you cherry you're amazing i modded you obviously and we'll be back here probably next thursday i don't know if thursday we're always going to be the day but yeah we're definitely gonna be back soon um so have a great night and i'll see you next week peace